Amigos, ¿cómo están? Me encuentro en Miami, Florida. Tenemos un escenario impresionante que se está montando en estos momentos. Los últimos detalles. ¿Por qué? Porque va a ser el lanzamiento del tráiler oficial de Fast 9 a unos cuantas horas del Super Bowl. Vamos a tener entrevistas con todo mundo y este evento, solamente este evento, es para lanzar con todo el tráiler oficial. How are you guys? Great. Great. Y muchachos, tenemos a las más guapas del mundo mundial. Aquí están Jordana, Michelle. How are you girls? Hi, how you doing? Tenemos al papá de todos, al dueño, al master of puppets, el tigre, Vin Diesel. Thank you, man. ¿Cómo estás? Very good, very good. Thank you for being here. The biggest hand that I uh, hold in my life. <laughs> I, I'm actually not, these are not my real hands, I'm wearing baseball gloves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose that, that, that makes sense now. <laughs> I used to live my life a quarter mile at a time. In this part of the saga, how can we be different or surprising after all the things that I have seen in all the saga? Oh, well, you're sitting right here, character of Jacob. You know, we talk about family a lot in Fast and Furious, but we never explored it through this lens of blood. And that's something that's very new to us and, and, and it's exciting. Apparently, that's the challenge. What, how do you defy expectations? How do you one-up yeah. each movie? And how do you evolve the character's story in the most truthful and organic way? This is the challenge that we enjoy and we meet this challenge because of all the fans like you that uh, have grown up with this franchise and made this your saga. But things changed. Call father now. I will always be in your heart. Because we're surprised. <laughs> Every day we get on set, we don't know what we're going to see, what we're going to experience. Reading the script is one thing. Getting to the set to see cars we're driving, the locations, the action sequences, how they're going to go about doing things, what we got to do, fighting, shooting, choreography, jumping off buildings. It's just never ending, man. So I think the fans are loyal and because they know that we're going to work as hard as we possibly can to deliver something that feels new, even though they've been looking at this for a long time. Who is he? Do you have this entrance in, next, in, in, the, in, the, in the movie like John Cena, Toretto! <laughs> and the trumpets play and it's dun 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 dun. Exactly. Uh, that was, you can see Toretto. That was uh, my one creative suggestion. <laughs> didn't do so good, nope. so I don't know if you're going to see that in the movie, <laughs> but maybe uh, hopefully the internet will run with it and think of something. Little Brian, I have a gift for you. I'm very happy because the new movie coming out again, and you are the, in the movie, you back to the saga, yeah. so I'm so excited. How does your character come to the saga again? Can you explain me? Well, my brother calls because there's a family matter that's really, really important and there's a blast from our past and we've got to collectively deal with this. So that's why I uh, leave the nest and, and come back. Yeah, and she kicks this. ass too. Yeah, yeah, she I'm so happy. But uh, everybody's going to ask about, about Brian, right? How can you go yeah, to it's fix tough. that? It's a tough, yeah. it's a tough dance. Yes. It is a tough um, dance. You know, but but I think that we do it with lots of love and respect, mm -hmm. and you'll have to see what happens. Maybe this is the end, but we're gonna go out together. You know, I'd ride to the death with you. You have you have a, a new new casting coming out. You have new new actors and the old ones that come again. Yeah. We're surprised with the, with the trailer that we watch. What can you tell us about that? It's always unexpected. That's that's what keeps everybody on their toes. You know, you never know who may have died, may like who did not die, who can come back, what new characters you can have. It's always a surprise, and that's what keeps everybody continuously just passionate about the franchise because they know that they're gonna it's gonna, it, they're gonna be surprised one way or another. 
and what comes next. I, I think the way that these movies continue to be um, exciting and new for people is, yes, we've met these characters for many, many years, um, but there's always things that we don't know about them. And I think this movie very much kind of uh, brings a lot of things to light, especially for Dom and Letty, so like their history. And it's amazing to sort of learn something new about those characters. And then with that brings new, like, new people and new stories. And that's always really exciting. And I think the, the Fast and Furious franchise like is kind of endless possibilities, really. There's so many moving parts that could, could suddenly you know, appear. And you're like, wow, this is amazing. And mine just caught up to me. Been a long time, don't. Everybody is changing. Even you. You are a mother now. Yeah. You have uh, a baby. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I inherited a child. Yeah. It's it's, uh, it's it's beautiful to see. And uh, it's gonna be beautiful to watch this powerful woman that has this responsibility as a mother, but even in the in the field with danger. It's kind of... Uh, I think mothers are more so dangerous exactly. than regular people. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Because they're living for two people. And yeah. when, you, when, when, you, when you mess with a woman who, who has a kid, yeah. you're, you're talking about double jeopardy there. There's, fierce, there's a fierceness and a passion that comes out of a mother's that is way more powerful than, than regular power, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think. But has this uh, this uh, this name Toretto in this kind of saga for you? It's kind of responsibility. It's How did you felt? Kind of. The name Toretto holds a massive responsibility and holds a 20-year legacy of entertaining the world. Uh, the Fast Saga has a global fan base that is asking the same questions you are. What will they do next? What can I expect? How are they going to raise the bar? And to be brought into the franchise is an amazing opportunity. To be given the name Toretto is an amazing opportunity, but comes with challenge and responsibility. So I'm, I'm very grateful. Pickup is Dom's brother. Your whole life, you pushed yourself to be faster than Dom. And it has a lot of uh, Latin flavor. Lots. It's always had Latin fl yeah. flavor. It's been something that uh, has been important to me. It has. It's been so important to me that when I did the cameo for Tokyo Drift, I said, "You didn't have to pay me. The only thing you have to do is play a song." a song called Los Bandoleros before I come on screen <laughs> and that was the, the beginning of reggaeton. You are going to be in the wheel but you are going to fight as well face to face with Toretto or the rest of the family? I think that's what makes Fast 9, there's a lot of things that make Fast 9 interesting but I think for the first time uh, in, in in terms of what can Fast do next. For the first time, you will see Toretto versus Toretto. So we're up against a master thief, assassin, high performance driver. Let's remember when you were teenagers, which was uh, your first car, and did you have any funny st story about it? Mine was a Grand Pontiac Grand Prix, and it was, I think it was recalled 315 times. Yeah. Within the first two years. So I definitely have one. I was in high school, man, and I, all I cared about was actually having a vehicle. I didn't care about what it looked like on the inside, outside. I had a Plymouth Reliant with a mixed, messed up paint job because somebody had waxed the car previous to me and left it out in the sun. The whole outside of the car was still had remnants of the wax job on there. But I didn't care. I was the happiest man in the world. I was 16 years old, had a car, was able to drive to school. That's all that mattered to me. I didn't have my license when we got this movie. I don't think Michelle had her yeah, license. Yeah, I got my license for the movie. I learned to drive on a track. Yeah, really? And I, I was growing up in New York. I was like, I don't need a car. I love taking cabs or the subway. Um, and now that we're in, in LA, you know. Everybody I, I, lives yeah, in their car in Los Angeles. Car, yeah, right. no. Please tell me that's not a Pontiac Fiero strapped to a rocket engine? Impressive, I know. No, no, that's, that's not impressive. 80, 84 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. I got it when I was 14 and a half, so I couldn't even drive yet. And I smoked the transmission by the time I was 15 and a half, and it's an automatic. So uh, I, I learned to drive before I could drive, and I'm grateful for that. All right, Dom, what's next? 
I had a uh, 83 Cutlass Sierra, license plate number 1HNA540. <laughs> wow. What's I remember it. The only yeah. license plate number I remember. <laughs> Very excited. Same like Chris, in high school, got my license at 16, and um, just couldn't believe that I had the independence to be able to say, I don't want to be somewhere and leave. Wow. Um, without having to get on a bus or catch a train. So, you know, it's uh, it's been a feeling that I've been addicted to my whole life. I don't want to be somewhere, I'm out. <laughs> Smarter than Don. Stronger than Don. But could you kill him? Question. I don't drive. Do drive! <laughs> wow. I did own a car once though. But it had to have, um, so in England, when you are learning to drive, you have L plates on your car that just lets other drivers know that you're a learner driver. So I had a car that I owned that had L plates on and I could drive it when somebody who was over 21 and had had a license for like three years could drive, like I could drive as long as in the passenger seat there was an, like a qualified driver. Yeah. So I had that car for a few years, but it was a, a Peugeot, a Peugeot 206. There's nothing more powerful than the lover family. But you turn that into anger, there's nothing more dangerous. I got this, my first car was a 79 Monte Carlo, and I bought it at an auction in New York City. And the way the auction worked is you weren't able to turn the car on. You could just look at it from the outside and you had to decide whether you were going to buy it. I bought it for $175. And as I was driving home, there was a huge cl cloud of blue smoke behind me. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized my first car was 11. Vin Diesel, thank you very much. Uh, nice pleasure, to see you again. Las cosas se están volviendo locas. Espérense a que se estrene. Ahí está la fecha oficial de estreno en las pantallas grandes de todo el planeta. Se va a poner muy, muy chido porque todavía tienes mucha creatividad, muchas escenas jaladas. Se los he dicho a lo largo de todas estas películas de Fast and Furious. Si ustedes están esperando ver una película lógica asistiendo a Fast and Furious, no esperen nada lógico cuando van a ver Rápidos y Furiosos. Así que disfruten, pongan su cerebro así en bajadita, en neutral y déjense ir como Gordon Tobogán y se la van a pasar muy bien. Yo soy Alex Montiel, pásela chido, nos vemos en el cine. Bye.